Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this afternoon's video we're going to have a look at the latest on the current heatwave we're seeing at the moment and the potential for seeing quite a major thundery breakdown especially in the west um, through Wednesday night into Thursday. There's a lot of precipitation signals starting to come up and it does look like we could be seeing some severe storms around for some. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe, and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do first go through the GFS, give us a uh, long-term sort of outlook, we'll run through these quickly, as I do want to get onto the precipitation and the temperature charts um, in a little bit more depth. So you can see at the moment, we've got that southerly wind bringing up that really quite hot air that arrives over the course of this afternoon into this evening, the really hot air that's going to give us potentially high 20s, if not 30 degrees through Tuesday and Wednesday. Today, we've seen temperatures rise up to the mid to high 20s in a few spots. 26, 27 degrees um, was, uh, is very possible this afternoon. Um, as I'm recording this right now, we haven't re uh, quite reached the peak of the day in terms of temperatures. Um, so I can only say what it is really at the moment, which is around 25, 26 degrees in many locations. But it could still rise by a couple of degrees and we could see 27, 28. But it really is Tuesday and Wednesday we could see the tip um, of the temperatures. So if we do run through, you can see low pressure does run through through Wednesday and Thursday. And that is where we could be seeing a thundery breakdown where that hot air is pushed away by the instability within this low pressure system. If we do zoom into the United King Kingdom look, you can see this low pressure coming in from the southwest with the hot air still in the east. As those interact, that's where we could see the severe storms and for many, probably heavy showers, um, at least some rain. You can see the low pressure is positioned to the west um, over the sort of center of Ireland. So it does look like the biggest storms um, and the most likelihood of these big storms will be over Ireland, Northern Ireland, parts of Wales, Western England and the southwest as well. Now, there is still a possibility in the east as well. And we'll have a look at that as well. Um, but at the moment is most favored in the west. So if we do go back to the European outlook, you can see those low pressure moves through. And then we do start to see the potential for high pressure to build back in. Now, it's not going to be a really quite a warm high pressure. It's again, it's going, it going to be positioned to our north. So we could see this uh, another situation where we saw in late August, where we saw that low pressure, uh, where that high pressure sit over the top of the UK, bringing in that easterly breeze with some risible cloud and um, some drab conditions so hopefully we don't see that sort of conditions again but it could be setting up by next week there is a bit of low pressure in the southwest which could provide some more showers it is still generally looking pretty dry no massive deluge but still will be more showers around as, as we head into the longer term we do briefly see a northerly wind with some more rain before we see sort of flipping in and out of high pressure low pressure pattern as it does look like right towards the end of the run the jet stream is going to be really powering up with this sort of pretty much flat westerly wind because at the moment it is powered up but pretty amplified um, which means we are currently seeing southerly winds with some really quite warm conditions if we do run through to the gfs um, and we'll have a look at the precipitation just for the next few days you see at the moment there's a few showers in the north but shouldn't be troubling too much generally very dry through tuesday but as we head into Wednesday, you start to see some showers and potentially some storms starting to encroach on the far southwest. You can see them in picking up intensity through Wednesday evening, potentially through Thursday. Again, favoured in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales and southwestern areas of some big storms. Further east, there is still the chance of showers and storms, but just less uh, likely. And they do spread through five Thursday and pretty much clear by Friday into northern areas and then just really a showery outlook through Friday. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, um, but it does look like the west is favoured for any of these storms. If we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon is forecast to reach about 27, uh, maybe 28 degrees in a few spots. Um, a little bit cooler further northwards, but the hot air quite, hasn't quite reached as far as northern England and Scotland at this stage. But it will warm up through Tuesday and Wednesday. You can see by Tuesday afternoon, widely mid to high 20s, if not getting towards 30 degrees in England um, and Wales. Ireland, 26 degrees, and even to Scotland now, seeing temperatures getting to the low to mid 20s for many. 
Wednesday is another really quite nice day, especially in the north and the east, widely in mid-20s, if not getting up towards 30 degrees once again. You can see in the far south of Ireland and the far southwest of England, parts of southern Wales as well, temperatures are starting to drop down by a couple of degrees. So their pit temperature could peak on Tuesday, and that's because we have low pressure encroaching in with potential for some showers, some storms, and some cooler conditions. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Through Thursday, you can see temperatures once again very high in the east, around 26, 27 degrees. But where we have those storms and the showers breaking out in the west, it will cool temperatures down. So it definitely does look like for the highest temperatures, uh, it is favoured definitely in the east at this stage. Um, but we could still see some very good temperatures over the next couple of days in the west as well. Um, but the west is going to be more favoured for the thunderstorms. So it depends really what sort of weather types you do like. If we do end by having a look at Friday's temperatures, you can see widely temperatures are a few degrees cooler, maybe low to mid-20s in the east, maybe peaking around 23, 24 degrees in a few spots, but widely back to around 20 degrees for many. Um, feeling still pretty decent, but with a fresher feel coming in off the Atlantic. So if we do now have a look at the GM run, having a look how that compares, you can see the southerly wind moving up at the moment. Then we have that low pressure system coming in, from the southwest, and then we continually have low pressure pushing in. For we do see that high pressure build in for early next week, potentially bringing things a bit drier. But of course, it's got that bit of an easterly breeze, so there could be some more cloud and some a little bit of rain and drab in the south. Beyond that, though, we do see a bit of a mixed signal. We've got low pressure trying to push in from the Atlantic. We've still got a ridge of high pressure over towards Scandinavia trying to block it out. And we're sort of in between weather systems. Not warm, not cold, not a deluge of rain, but probably not completely dry as well. So a bit of a confusing picture in the longer term. And as I said, we've just got to um, keep watching the models over the coming days to see how Thursday could, uh, how the rest of September could turn out after this week of heat wave and then some storms so if we do have a look at the gm for the precipitation rate and the temperature gm precipitation charts does sometimes underdo it a little bit you can see through wednesday we do see the showers and the thunderstorms pushing in and then more showers and thunderstorms breaking out on thursday you can see very scattered nature to them potentially forming into lines you don't see massive intensity on the gm but that's something we've sort of seen that's pretty consistent through most gm runs they do sometimes underdo the intensity within the showers as i said you can see they move through, favoured in the west, um, but still a few in the east, and they sort of move through by Friday time, where things are looking um, a little bit dry, but still quite a few showers around with westerly winds. If we do have a look at the temperatures, you can see by Monday afternoon, so it's this afternoon we saw 25, 26 degrees, maybe a few degrees above that. You can see northern France getting up towards 30 degrees, so it just shows you where that hot air is starting to push in. As we head through to Wednesday afternoon, you can see widely 27, 28 degrees, but cooler in the far southwest. Quite considerably cooler, only down to 20, 21, maybe 22 degrees, as we do have the showers and low pressure pushing in. Um, but, oh, we skipped Tuesday afternoon, sorry. And you can see widely mid to high 20s, 29 degrees, potentially in Midlands, into East Anglia and the northeast. And again, as I said, very warm once again, 27, 28 degrees um, in the east, a bit cool in the southwest. By Thursday afternoon, you can see once again in the east, favoured around 24, 25, maybe 26 degrees, but in the west, a lot cooler, getting to high teens, maybe low 20s, but showers and storms will be quite widespread through Thursday. And we'll again have to see how those do form. By Friday afternoon, things are looking a lot cooler for all. Maybe 10 degrees cooler for a few spots from what we could be seeing on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. Widely mid to high teens, maybe the odd 2021 in the southeast or east Anglia. So a lot cooler there by Friday. But of course, some people enjoy the cooler weather and won't enjoy the sort of sudden hot spell we're seeing at the moment. So if we do run through the ECMWFC, how that compares. You can see at the moment, we've got that low pressure pushing in. With very hot air ahead, and that's going to be bringing those thunderstorms potentially through Wednesday and Thursday. That low pressure doesn't move through, and we sort of go between the weather systems. But you can see, yeah, as we remain really within um, weather systems, and you can see once again low pressure trying to push on the uh, in off the Atlantic, 
by the end of the run, but high pressure overscan Navy still trying to block it off. So it does look like quite a mixed signal within the models at the moment. No massive signal for an absolute deluge, but neither is there a signal for big high pressure. Just really, again, in between weather systems. So some days could be quite fine and dry if we do see some dry weather around. Other days we could see some more shower activity. And we're going to, again, have to see what the models sort of push over the coming days. Um, as it does, as I said, look very mixed. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, see what they're showing for the next few weeks. You can see temperatures are really quite high at the moment at 850 HPA, getting towards 15, if not 16 degrees at 850 HPA, which would give temperatures into the low 30s in July. But being first week of September, it is just does look like temperatures will peak mid to high 20s, if not maybe 30 degrees in a localized area. You can see we do have some precipitation signals pushing through by sort of Thursday time, and that is where we could be seeing those showers and storms break out. In the longer term, you can see temperatures are generally trending down to around average. Few ensemble members going either side, but it does generally just look like average conditions. There are frequent uh, frequent uh, precipitation spikes within the ensembles, but nothing too massive and nothing too organised at this stage. So it does just look like a lot of shower activity. And as I said, in the longer term, there's no real signal at this stage for anything really warm or anything really cold or anything really, um, really unsettled or dry. It just looks pretty mixed within the ensembles and we'll again have to see how they do resolve over the coming days you can see still a lot of precipitation signals in the longer term so still a lot of low pressure around if we have a look at the sea level pressure you can see high pressure at the moment but slowly dropping away over the coming days the low pressure starts to encroach it does return to higher pressure by the start of next week but it's not guaranteed to be a big ridge you can see some are a little bit lower um, similar sort of pressure we could be seeing later this week, which would give a lot of showers potentially in a few spots, but other areas could see some sunshine and some dry weather. So we'll have to keep an eye on what the models do show. Do you see longer term, there's still a lot of scatter. And, and as I said, again, it really isn't particularly well modeled at this stage and we'll have to keep an eye on it. If we do now have a more detailed look at the thunderstorm activity. So if we do go through the icon, we'll go through the WRF run with the Cape chart, and then we'll finish off with the UK Met Office run as well. You can see on the icon at the moment, very little shower activity over the next coming couple of days. Buying Tuesday evening into early hours of Wednesday, we could start to see the first showers start to encroach on the far southwest into Southern Ireland as well, and really start to take off through Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. You see a line of potentially very severe thunderstorms breaking out in the west, and then we do see those sort of taking off northwards, and then more widespread showers and storms break out. And as I said, it won't be exactly modelled where the big storms will be, but at this stage you can see most of these green and yellow colours, which are symbolic of the heavier rain and the more likelihood of thunderstorms are more favoured in the west. In the east, it's more blue colours, so it's more likely to be just heavier showers. You can see beyond that, we maintain a lot of uh, a lot of showers around, even into Friday. It does diminish a little bit through Friday evening into Saturday, but still some showers around. If we do have a look at the WRF run at the Cape charts, you can see at the moment we've got significant Cape over Spain into the Mediterranean. That's going to be pushing northwards over the coming days. And by Tuesday evening, we've got decent Cape over towards Ireland into parts of Wales and Northern England as well. It will really pick up through Wednesday and you can see really takes off into Wales, the southwest, and potentially into West Midlands and central southern England. Also over parts of Scotland, north, uh, northwestern England. Uh, or far northwest of England and potentially parts of southern uh, Ireland as well. So it does give us a signal where we could see the biggest storms take off. It's not guaranteed the biggest storms will be there, but that's where we got the highest likelihood. As we head through Wednesday evening, you can see those Cape starts to diminish away, and by Thursday we see some more pickup in the northeast, potentially where we could see some more severe thunderstorms potentially breaking out, and then it does look like Cape will be diminishing beyond that as i said it's not guaranteed to see the thunderstorms in the cave it just gives a bigger likelihood it gives us more energy to make these big storms areas where we see lower cape can still see some storms um and we'll just have to see what happens over the coming days if we do have a look at the precipitation from the wrf's run see how significant that is showing you can see the showers starting to spiral up from the south by Tuesday evening, potentially into the southwest, fizzling out a little bit. But through early hours of Wednesday, you see more heavy showers and thunderstorms breaking out in the southwest into parts of Southern Ireland, then more widely breaking out in the west through Wednesday afternoon 
in sort of a line before breaking out once again early hours of Thursday morning um, and still some significant storms and showers moving through um, and even through Friday a few showers around as well so again very similar sort of signal from all the models here with these thunderstorms not exactly the same but all showing generally the heaviest showers and thunderstorms in the west in the east more favored to be dry through especially Wednesday if not through Wednesday uh, Thursday morning as well but by Thursday afternoon it does look like most areas will be seeing some showers and some storms around if we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, see what that's showing with the precipitation, then we'll have a look at its temperatures as well, as it is generally going to be the most accurate model we do look at. You can see showers activity is pretty minimal at the moment, very little around, but you can see by late hours on Tuesday into early hours of Wednesday, some showers and storms breaking out in the far southwest into southern Ireland as well, fizzling out, and then we see another batch move up through Wednesday morning, Generally out in the west, we're seeing these storms and showers break out in the east and in the north, looking pretty dry still and warm. And then we do see areas of storms breaking out, one in central England, far in the far southwest, into parts of Ireland as well, and some more broader rain over towards northern England through early hours of Thursday, through Thursday morning. And by Thursday afternoon, we got a lot of showers and thunderstorms breaking out um, through Thursday afternoon. And you can see how scattered they are. And you can see even by the UK Met Office run, there is really no area that's escaping, seeing the, seeing the potential of heavy showers. So even if at the moment the models don't look favourable for where you are for the storms and you really do want some storms, there is still the possibility of change. And of course, things can change on the day. We can see storms um, sort of pop up unmodelled. So we'll just have to keep an eye on what happens. You can see by Friday, still some showers around, but less likely to be as heavy. If we do finally have a look at the max temperatures, you can see through Monday afternoon we saw the temperatures getting around 26, 27 degrees, peaking, feeling really quite warm and summery. You can see by Tuesday we're seeing temperatures peak once again around 28, 29 degrees in a few spots and widely mid-20s if not towards high 20s um, into parts of Ireland, Wales, southwestern areas and even into northern England and southern Scotland. You can see overnight temperatures through Tuesday to Wednesday are like, un unlikely to really dip much below high teens, if not around 20 degrees in a few spots. And by Wednesday afternoon, we can see temperatures once again booming in the east, 28, 29 degrees, and even into northern areas, into Scotland, 25, 26 degrees is possible. But for the far southwest, into southern Wales, into southern Ireland as well, seeing potential for around 20 degrees or so as we have those showers pushing in. By Thursday afternoon, you see widely temperatures down, maybe some decent temperatures in the far east, um, in towards sort of East Anglia, um, as we do still potentially have some drier weather there and some uh, more chance of seeing some of that hotter weather break out. But elsewhere, we have those showers and thunderstorms, so it does mean temperatures will be a good few degrees down by Friday. Still decent temperatures, maybe 23, 24 degrees, but still sort of on the, a cooling trend as we do have some cooler weather starting to push in. So do make sure you go out and enjoy this warm weather over the next few days. And if you do enjoy thunderstorms, keep your fingers crossed for Wednesday and Thursday and you could potentially be seeing some storms where you are. And we'll have to keep an eye on how those do, do develop over the coming days and I'll have more updates out over the next couple of days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.